so what is very important is that i need to see and today i met somebody who said that my child is having an x y z problem which is the child in australia there is no cure so i said okay so let me talk to you about this situation how you can turn it into victory is it a good good situation to learn yes if the mother is going through this pain where the doctor says this is the rarest infirmity and we have no cure for it so what will happen to the mother she is already a victim living a defeated life but here is god going to teach us through an example of another person a couple who lived a defeated life and turned that situation in the natural impossible to actual physical manifestation and that's why when we started the lord said this is a fantastic parable we heard this him but did not see on the screen and i was looking at all of you you could hear but not get the words clear and that's why there was no participation and the lord said there is a system you ask the person on the projector and you click at the same time she is projecting the video you are projecting the audio they both are working together and now i could see everybody participating so now i not only want to speak to this mama but every one of us the system in heaven which god uses and god says you need to use the same system and you can change anything seen using god's promises is it a good teaching for today yes because everybody has got yes can i ask you to do something to adjust the electrical vibration it's giving me such a massive yeah. headache i want to be here today but i cannot listen to that it's hurting my head it's just a constant this that the sound okay oh, now okay. keep it here yeah. oh, yeah. keep the mic there yeah. <laughs> so we found a solution when you find a solution you are so happy praise god okay thank you and thank you for that for pointing out see if a person is saying it's okay then the same frequency would have been working throughout the day but when you said i cannot tolerate so the first thing we learn is intolerance brings change if you tolerate then it wouldn't have brought a change so also in our life there are many things that are talking to us and when you tolerate it there will be no change but the moment you say i do not tolerate it you will surely find a solution for a change and the moment you said it i realized there is an issue here so let me make the change you are happy the person who is going to do the editing will not be happy the reason is the mic has gone far away from my mouth so he will have to do extra work to boost the audio so that people on the youtube can now hear clearly he, he will do it no problem praise god so my friends as my sister said i can't bear that frequency and if i have to sit here from morning to evening it is not tolerable in the same way you also know that there are some things happening in your life which is manifesting which is ruling which you can sense with your senses 
and it is irritating and you have been praying for years to get it out of your system out of your family out of your life and you have tried it and tried it and tried it and it's actually increasing growing but not getting terminated amen amen so let us pray and ask god for a solution because god is a creator all things are possible to him and all things are possible to us who believe in him amen so heavenly father i thank you for this parable lord thank you for showing us this morning in this him jesus the king the servant of us all o oh lord jesus you chose the disciples who became apostles and you began to teach them you opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures this morning we too your disciples are gathered here and i thank you lord that a beautiful mama asked me i am going through a physical situation i cannot ignore it and i cannot tolerate it my child needs a solution so heavenly father we ask you teach us through the scriptures those things those problems those mountains those those pain and sorrow that we go through how can we change these situations which are so real we cannot ignore it how can we change them into victories into supernatural manifestation please teach us we ask you in the name of jesus and we believe that mighty god you have solution for everything we thank you and we praise you in advance for what you are going to show us is not going to be a knowledge from the head but practical knowledge from the heart that we all can practice and experience victory in our life in jesus name amen we all know about a car right car and from childhood these children might be sitting in their dad's car mom's car dad is driving mom is driving they are watching and they know theory how the car is moving how the steering is moving right but does that mean they can drive the car they have got knowledge from the head in the same way we also can have knowledge from the bible from the head and still see a life in destruction in disaster but when we learn the system of heaven and apply that practically in our life revealed to us by the holy spirit we are no longer living a natural life but we are living a spiritual life a spiritual life is a life of things not revealed to our senses or a, a life depending on invisible things rather than depending on visible things right from school what were the teachers teaching us things visible or things not visible 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 and now when you come to the bible or you want to get connected to god he speaks on things visible or not visible not visible ah 
there comes the battle so let us look at a man in the bible he and his wife are going through a battle the man is 100 the wife is 90 and at the age of 99 and 89 they have a word from god that they will have children not one but they will both be father and mother of many nations when they were young they did not have any children now looking into the natural is it possible for a man brother how old are you 67 so another 20 33 years more and at 33 years and then god comes to you and says you are you are the father of many nations and all your life you had no children now all the ladies who are there you increase your age to 99 89 total 89 and god comes and says you are a mother of many nations what would be your feeling in the natural possible no but god is showing us a formula where you can make it possible so i'm talking to that mama who said my child is having this problem you listen to the teaching and then ask a question am i following the application that god is saying or am i following the application opposite to what god is saying so give me romans chapter 4 verse 17 as it is written as it is written i have made thee i have made thee a father of many nations a father of many nations pause pause when god is speaking this line does abraham have any child no, no. now is god talking to abraham in future tense or past tense i have made you future future i am making present tense i made you past tense i will make you future tense so don't tell me to take me back into grammar class so is it past tense so when god spoke to abraham he has spoken to him in past tense and abraham can sense with his natural senses in the present tense is he a father or is he childless he is childless so the senses are saying i am childless god is saying i have made you father of many nations so is there going to be a battle between the two present sense present tense revealed to abraham no children god is saying father of many nations now which one do you think abraham should believe what is seen is childless what is unseen is father of many nations which one should abraham believe which one do you believe there are certain things seen by your eyes and the promises of god is saying in past tense things that are not seen brother which one do you believe seen or the unseen the doctor gives you a report and the report is bad report now looking at the bad report are your emotions getting triggered based on the bad report or you're looking at the report from the bible by his stripes you have been healed pastors which one do we choose to believe the present tense the doctor says very few days to live god says 
when my son hung on the cross he took all your sickness and disease and his body was wounded so that by his wounds you were healed now which evidence do you choose the seen or the unseen we are trained to believe what our senses or the word of god because when you open the bible and you read the bible there is not one place you will find evidence seen the whole bible is evidence not revealed to your senses unseen so our life is built up on things seen or things not seen so as long as you are living on things seen it is a natural life even though you are a christian and you are looking at things seen the result will be the same like a gentile who does not know christ he also lives on things seen the result will both be the same the result will change when you can see the seen with your senses but you choose to believe in the things that is unseen for example can i talk about your wife brother agustin i better ask others i will be going tomorrow and then they will both have i don't want to plant a wrong seed so as soon as maria sits in the car she takes her mobile out and she has got a good friend she'll call that friend and throughout the driving she will listen to a friend and a friend is so good she'll only tell her go straight 300 meters take a left then she'll say a roundabout take the second roundabout and then she'll say take a u turn your destination has come on the left side and she is so good to that lady does not question her at all and i asked her have you seen this lady she says no then why do you believe she says i believe all that she will ask you is can you give me your address i'll reach there because she is putting a trust in the lady, lady. and even men brother when you drive do you listen to that lady but if the wife is sitting next to you do you listen to the wife <laughs> the wife whom you can see and the lady whom you can't see but yet you choose to believe the lady whom you can't see it happens there also <laughs> all the men they will listen to the lady whom they can't see why do you do that because of the gps she knows and she tells accurate mama doesn't know that's why dada believes the lady because she is accurate mama is not accurate in everything good in the same way god's word is the gps of heaven and your senses are connected to the knowledge of this earth so abram learned something the bible says as it is written i have made you father of many nations he believed look at that he believed what before him who he before him now my question is are we in the church yes the blessed sacrament is there yes okay so you are in the presence of the blessed sacrament yes agreed yes now are you actually present physically or spiritually spiritually both not 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 uh, not applicable a person can be physically here and the mind can go to the kitchen for example the mother has left her children to school physically you are here 
possible that your mind is traveling to school so are you in the presence of god spiritually or physically But you can hear me. Okay, okay. But you can hear me. Praise God. So, so she can sit in any location, but she is saying, "I am keeping my mind to what I am hearing." So, is she still connected? Not necessary. She is sitting in front. She is sitting behind, and she is giving me a parable. Brother, you can't see me. but yet i can get connected to you by the words you speak mm. praise god now here he says in the sight of god or before him or in the presence of god in whom he believed now please understand abram had a relationship with god for the last 24 years he was called out of his house out of his family at the age of 75 and in this 24 years he had experienced god amazingly he had seen that god is faithful to his word and whatever god said even though it was not visible at that time god made it visible because abraham believed in god have you heard the word believe okay if i have to give you and it is a mathematics you got 10 dollars and you spend 7 dollars on a poor man how many dollars would you have everybody has got answer 3 now the answer that you gave me is because we learned in school by sight and by our senses that really speaking 10 minus 7 is 3 which i can touch the 3 dollars i can use the 3 dollars it is revealed to my senses but the moment you said 3 you said i believe and that's why i spoke agree now if you look at the scripture give me luke 638 and then i'm going to ask you the same question give and it shall be given unto you now what is the first thing he says give now in school what did we learn giving is subtraction receiving is addition now jesus is saying in my kingdom when you give to the kingdom of god you give to the poor is it subtraction or multiplication because he said when you give it will be given back to you good measure press down shaken together running over shall woman men giving shall woman men you see there also the word of god is saying man not woman and no, no, no don't get it right <laughs> men and woman are included okay because the woman came from the man so man shall Shall men give into your bosom? So is God going to give you a man? Men. All this time, what were you thinking? God is the source, but He has got His own channels by which men will come and pour into your bosom or into your lap. Then He says, "With what measure you give, it is measured back to you." Now we have heard this scripture so many times but the question is do we believe so can a christian be a poor man can a person who is a believer of scriptures ever be a poor man can he be broken or is it going to multiply absolutely so in a day are we thinking or looking out for opportunities to give or to keep 
Praise God. Hallelujah. If we all were givers, what would be the world? Peace. When I started my journey with the Lord, this is the mathematics the Lord taught me 26 years back. He said, if you want love, you got to give love. If you want mercy, you got to give mercy. You want forgiveness, you give forgiveness. Now, when I look with my natural senses, I can see I got $10, I spent $7 on a poor man, the man did not give me, and I got $3, and here God is saying, you will have multiples of 7, might be even 700, might be even 7,000. Now, this is seen, this is unseen. Which one do I choose to believe? And if I say I choose to believe 700, then my next question would be to myself, am I applying what I believe in my everyday life? So the word believe means, I hear the message, and then I take a corresponding action. If I hear the message, and I'm still believing with my senses, then my action will not follow the scripture, it will be opposite to the scripture. But the same message I follow with action, then I will be taking action according to the scripture. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Abraham believed means whatever God said, he would not rely on his physical senses, but he relied on what God said and he believed into action and therefore God's promises were fulfilled in his life. So it's not enough to say, I read the scriptures every day. What is very important is, what I read, did I believe? And if I believed, did I put it into action? So the fight for everybody is between seen and unseen. What is unseen has power to change seen. What is seen and revealed to our senses is a fact and it is always going to change. It is not permanent, it's temporary. But what you see in the Bible are truths that is unseen and the truth remains the same even after centuries. It cannot be changed. So every scripture is a truth, unseen. Everything that is happening in our life is seen, which is a fact. So the battle is between a fact and a truth. Now this mother got a report from the doctor saying, your child has these facts and these are incurable. The mother also has a truth which the Bible says, that when Jesus hung on the tree, he took our sins, he took our sickness, he took everything that we received from Adam, and he died in a place as a substitute, as a representative, his body was wounded, so that by those wounds, we were healed. So now comes the battle. Fact, I can see it, I can touch it, I can even see the symptoms of my child. Truth, I can't see. I can't even see Jesus in flesh and blood. I can't even see Jesus crucified on the cross. I can't even see him buried. I can't even see Jesus raised from the dead. But because it's the written word, I choose to believe this truth. Now, as I was sharing this in Ireland, there was this mother who had, who has three children. The first child is okay. The second child 
has got digestive problem he has got allergy so he cannot eat any natural food the moment he eats his body does not digest and he has got a problem the only thing he can drink is a orange juice so because of lack of calorie the child to to, uh, to walk 8 to 10 steps requires energy and the child having no calories is unable to walk 10 steps the daughter has got a uh, iq is very low she has got no sensation of touch so she can put a hand on a frying pan and she would not even know that there is heat so she can put a hand on the frying pan and the hand can get fried but she would not know and she is a special child because the iq is low now the mother is preparing orange juice for the son and she has heard this teaching and the mother has got an allergy that if she drinks the orange juice she will have headache but if she takes medicine the migraine will remain for 3 days and for 3 days the eyes will close she can't open eyes and she is making orange juice for her son which is poisonous for her are you understanding the situation so as she is making the orange juice she is hearing between a fact and the truth and a voice says to her do you believe the truth she says yes can you put that genesis 1 the last scripture i want you to listen watch that 31st verse and god saw everything he had made and behold what it was very good it was very good has god made oranges yes did god say it was very good yes and this scripture struck the mom and she began to talk to god and said god according to your word oranges are created by you and you said it was very good so there is something in my body which is poisonous that when i take orange juice it triggers my system and my whole body becomes full of poison and i have to take medicine to come back to normal so lord i'm going to believe the truth because you said it is very good from now on i declare what your word says and i am going to fight this battle with truth against fact and she told the children you know that i can't take orange juice but i want you all to help me and as she finished making the juice she drank the juice she knows that three days she won't be able to open her eyes and at once the allergy began and she said i'm not going to take the medicine but i'm going to fight using the truth so the she and her children started speaking the same scripture god you said you made everything and whatever you made you said it was good and it is good and therefore orange juice is good for my mama and the mama said orange juice is good for me she refused to take the medicine the migraine began and as she is fighting the eyes have not yet closed 45 minutes later on the migraine stopped and she said this is wonderful she told the child i'll go to the market and bring some more oranges she went to the market brought more oranges made the juice again and said let's fight again and she took the second time it lasted for 25 minutes the third time there was no trace of migraine 
when she found this truth she spoke to her son she said son you just witness right before your eyes i had to fight the battle with truth so the truth is all that god has created for you is good there is something in your system that is triggering and saying that this is poisonous for you if you are willing to fight then we can fight together i will not give you in large quantity but i will give you those things which your body says is poisonous but the word of god is saying it is good for you it is nutrition for you so are you ready to fight the boy said yes mom i am ready to fight the boy is about 7 years or 8 years old and the battle began every day there was a fight with different things given in very small quantity and the child the mother began to fight in no time they destroyed every allergy in the body and that boy now is the top athletic in the school and the best footballer for the year so the mom understood i have to fight the truth with the fact and then she started with the daughter and now the whole family began to fight the daughter is going to normal school the daughter can feel the temperature the daughter is making her own cakes and that's the time she went and spoke to amal and said amal what you thought i put into practice and i got the victory i cannot keep my mouth shut this truth has to be revealed to other parents who are going through terrible things in their children can we start a channel and that's how the channel began called nothing is impossible to god it's in ireland called jclm ireland nothing is impossible to god and in this channel people come from different parts of the world watching on the youtube learning the truths and the system practicing it and the mamas and the papas are bringing their children and saying this is how my child was this is how i used the truth unseen and i changed the scene completely by using the unseen and they must have finished more than 130 episodes every week one parent will come and share how some of the parents have children where the medical report says your child is suffering from autism and now the same medical same hospital is giving a new report a child is completely normal so the question is is your life full of facts or is your life full of truths if your life is full of truths you don't have one physical evidence in your favor the only evidence you have is the written word of god the lady sitting there also will testify how all the facts said no chance for your baby and she said no i choose to believe the truth and i will kill the fact which says no chance how old is your baby the challenge is are you going to rely on the knowledge of the world or are you going to rely on the knowledge of heaven and that is what we are learning today with examples from the bible the first one is abram learned that god gives life to the dead by using faith put that genesis 1 was number 1 2 and 3 in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void 
Now, physical condition: the earth is without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now, that's the physical condition. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The spirit of God is there, moving upon the face of the waters, but not changing anything. in the physical realm everything is a big chaos the earth is void formless and darkness covers the face of the deep i want all of you to look at the third verse yeah read then god said let there be light and there was light and god said there is darkness let there be light and there was light no yes or no yes yes, yes or no yes. that's why you should give others a chance for them to learn please god yes or no yes 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 or no the lady with the black dress yes the lady with the blue dress yes or no yes now watch that again don't look at my face look at the screen third verse and god said there is darkness let there be light and there was light yes or no she said yes no yes no yes or no yes she said yes why are you saying no what did god say and what did i say Praise God. Is it given there there is darkness? Or what did I say? There is darkness. Let there be light. The moment I said there is darkness, did I speak the truth or the fact? Anything revealed to your senses are facts. Anything. not revealed to your senses but written in the word are truths so to change the fact did god use fact or truth what if god had to say there is darkness that would be very dangerous because that word there is darkness would multiply darkness but when god said let there be light the physical thing was cast out and the spiritual thing took that place and brought in the light so the holy spirit who was moving over the waters in verse 2 is waiting for god to speak the word and even today in our life the same holy spirit who is dwelling inside of us is waiting for us to speak the truth and not the fact so who we who are christians when we open our mouth and we speak facts that contradicts god's word now the holy spirit cannot work for you but the holy but the evil spirit will take that word that you spoke out of your mouth and bring it to pass so is it very dangerous to open my mouth and speak facts against the word of god So do I need somebody to bring self destruction in my life or my own words can bring self destruction in my life So this mother who got the report what the doctor said and she opens her mouth and she says my son is suffering from this this and this Can the holy spirit work for her can the evil spirit work for her Which one 
so does she need to cancel the words that she has spoken out of her mouth because that's how the spiritual world works that's how the kingdom of heaven works now take for example you spoke a hundred words in one day out of the hundred words how many words did you speak that were facts and how many words did you speak that were truths facts are words that you speak reveal to your senses truths are words that are not revealed to your senses but revealed to you through the written word of god that is the battle of our life let me give you some examples of jesus jesus saw a blind man did he say this man is blind or did he say receive sight did he say you are blind receive sight what did he say what do we say supposing your child has got some issue and somebody says how's your child what about those things what will you say you will say the facts you will say what the report says you will say in detail the name of that infirmity but you see god uses names and god said let there be light and there was light and god what look at the fourth verse and god saw the light that it was good so god saw the light it was good which one came first god saw the light god saw first or god said first he saw darkness but he said so did he see the light first in his spirit see we see things through our mind our five senses are connected to our mind faith that we receive from christ is not connected to our senses it is connected to our spirit so there is nothing called as blind faith faith is a person who sees not using physical senses but using the spirit sense that the scripture speaks about so when god began to share with me 26 years back that the mathematics of the kingdom of god is when you go and use your resources that god has given you to bless somebody to help somebody in the kingdom of god your resources shall multiply and as i began to learn that i began to say god i want to use your resources that you have given me the gift of teaching preaching to people but the problem is when people come to church and they listen they come for one day or two days by the time the word has gone in they already left so i want you to give me an auditorium that i can bring these people there keep them there for 15 days not charge them any money but help them to study the word day and night for 15 days so i need an auditorium now i began to visualize an auditorium having 2000 seats and 600 people can stay as i began to see that auditorium in my spirit i made a picture of it and put it on my laptop and every time i would on it i would see that picture for 8 years and i would speak to that picture every day 
and every day go and proclaim the word of god in my 26 years i have never taken a love offering in my 26 years i have never taken a collection in my 26 years there is never on the website called donate in my 26 years i have believed in my spirit luke 6 38 seven years later on the auditorium was ready with 2000 people capacity and 600 people to stay and i've been conducting retreats after retreats and all the retreats are always free even when i've come here i buy my own flight tickets because i believe in my spirit what god's word says my sense says it is subtraction my spirit says it is multiplication who do i choose and when i choose what the spirit says it is no longer blind faith i made the vision based on the word of god let me show you go to ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 oh sorry ephesians 3:20 that is why when god revealed this secret to me i said god i want to share this with the world day and night so that people who are interested and they come to the knowledge of the truth their relationship with god becomes intimate their lifestyle begins to change they are no longer living their life for themselves they are living their life in the kingdom for the kingdom of god ya yeah, read baba ya yeah, read now unto him that boss 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 the first word is now 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 is always in the present tense tomorrow is always in the future tense every scripture in the bible in christ jesus is now and yes to every person in christ jesus the bible doesn't say the promise is a yes to her and no to me in christ jesus every word is a yes to everybody so when he says now faith is always in now that is present tense and never in the future tense when it is future tense you are believing in the future that means it is hope it is expectation the good news is put that hebrews 11 verse 1 we'll join them together and then we will see ephesians chapter 3 now now faith is a substance of things he did not say faith is a feeling he said faith is a substance, substance. it is an invisible substance that is used sorry Wait, i can't see what book that was was from that is from hebrews 11:1 e- e- hebrews hebrews my english and your english will be a to- little <laughs> but try to understand my english my english is indian english because when i went to ireland there was a problem and i said the spirit of god will help you to develop so one man said hold on preacher you can't say that i said why because you said holy spirit will help you to de- develop he said why are you telling develop so i said what do i say he said said develop but those who are indians we were taught develop so he broke that word into two and he said you are saying develop so please have mercy on me praise god so when i come to that word i will always say develop i learned in ireland then i said to them you know there was a time when you irish people came to my country 
you brought education you call you brought medical facilities so much of charity in my country and we thank you for the same and today i have come to your country might be you have issues with my english but i want to tell you the sickness in your body can understand my english when i tell them to go in the name of jesus they agree and go all these days didn't you see sickness is running out of the body demons can understand my language so he started laughing so we had a good time praise god okay coming back hebrews 11:1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for let's take that much part when breakfast was served outside there were cakes i saw that did you see that yes the person who made the cake prepared the batter and everything whatever is prepared and then put into the mold which was round let's say round and then put it in the oven kept a temperature maintain the temperature and when the cake was ready was it on the same level or had it risen risen now what was the shape of the cake the mold was round so the shape of the cake will be round why is the shape of the cake round because the mold is round so in the same way faith is the substance of things hope for your hope is your mold which is spiritual not yet physical but you want to make that hope that desire that expectation which is invisible at the moment you want it to be made visible and to make it visible faith is the substance that supplies raw material to that thing that you are hoping for changing it from unseen to see and this faith substance you receive from the word of god so this substance called faith is stored in the word of god so whenever you make a hope or a desire you must first check is this desire godly ungodly if it is godly then you will surely have to tie it with promises of god that will supply you the raw material the substance called faith let me show you in the scripture how this works romans chapter 10 verse 8 read it what said it but what said it the word is nigh thee the word is near you even in thy mouth the word is in your mouth and in your heart and in your mind heart mind heart mind heart mind heart mind heart faith can never be in the mind because mind reveals to you through your senses faith cannot be seen it is always unseen but you can see it from your heart example are you connected with him can i ask your husband some question okay today morning when he came he surely saw his face in the mirror because he is clean shaved yes 
Why does he look into the mirror? Why he doesn't look into your eyes? When you were when you were when you were dating, at that time he said some dialogues that I can see through your eyes the whole world. But why is he not telling the same dialogue and shaving his beard? Because no man has ever seen their face; they have only seen the reflection. Woman having no beard, they don't need the mirror. Man having beard, we need the mirror. Conclusion: Man looks into the mirror every day. Woman having no beard, they don't need the mirror at all. So now, when he is looking at his face in the mirror, he is looking at that part which is not seen with natural eyes. But looking into the mirror, he takes the blade. and takes the corresponding action looking into the mirror agreed what if the little beard is remaining here and you see it in the mirror will you chop off that hair yes in the same way my eyes and my senses can sense things in the natural so i see through my senses natural things but if i want to see spiritual things i use a mirror called the word of god which the bible says when we look into the scriptures with unveiled mind then we can we are able to see into the mirror praise god so natural things can be understood through natural senses spiritual things can be understood by using spiritual senses called faith so how does this faith come by which i can grow my spiritual senses look at that same chapter verse number 17 so then so then faith, oh, okay let's start with the 13th verse then we'll go up to the 17 For whosoever, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved shall be saved then how then shall they call on him how then shall they call on the name of the Lord in whom they have not believed in whom they have not believed, believed. and how shall they believe in him and how shall a person believe in christ in whom they have not heard how can a person believe when he has not heard about christ then and how shall they hear without preacher ah how shall people hear about christ without a preacher then and how shall they preach except they be sent so how shall they preach except they send they are sent okay what is preaching trying to speak the word of god okay sorry proclaiming the word of god okay what else did jesus go preaching and teaching to the crowd and first he started preaching and teaching and there was massive healing Did he, did Jesus go around healing people or preaching people? So now what's preaching? We yeah, are preaching and teaching. But what is preaching? First we learn what is preaching, then we learn what is teaching. Preaching. Be making people understand. Okay, were the Pharisees also preaching? were they the teachers of the law then how come when the pharisees were speaking nobody was there when jesus was preaching there were so many there so jesus was talking about the knowledge that nobody knew but was he teaching the same scripture the pharisees knew the scriptures did he use the same book 
Then what was the difference? His preaching had power in them. And what about the Pharisees' preaching? They didn't have any power. Why? Ah, they were preaching from the senses and Jesus was preaching from heaven. Wisdom from heaven. Praise God. Now, now, if a person is given an opportunity to preach, the work of a preacher is to use the written word of God, explain to people using parables and examples how the system works where he makes a person believe from things seen to things unseen. So Jesus, when he was teaching, he was teaching through parables, taking normal examples and saying, this is how the system of the kingdom of God works. I'll give you an example. Put that Mark 4.26. And he said, And Jesus said, So is the kingdom of God. So is the kingdom of God. As if a man, as if a man, should cast seed into the ground. Should cast seed, seed into the ground. And should sleep. And should sleep. So the kingdom of God works this way. A person takes a seed, cast into the ground, and goes to sleep. Now, did Jesus say the word of God is a seed? Yes. Yes. So, the word of God is a seed. The word of the world is also a seed. Now, when you receive the word of God as a seed, he says you go to sleep without worry. Has anybody ever taken a scripture, learned a scripture, then went to sleep with worry? So are you going to sleep with worry or without worry? Without worry. Previously? Previously with. With worry. So even though you have the word of God with worry, worry means are you believing or doubting? Doubting. So did you go to sleep with a seed or did you go to sleep without a seed? Without a seed. Did you follow? Yes. So he says you plant a seed, then you go to sleep. sleep, then? And rise night and day. When you rise up, go and do what you are responsible to do. But see that you don't uproot the seed which has been planted. When you get worried, you have uprooted the seed. So he goes night and day, he rises up, then... And the seed should spring and grow up. Now, is it the man's responsibility to make the seed grow, sprout and grow? No. His job is to plant the seed, cover it with soil, and then by faith, believing that the seed is in, he needs to water the seed. He needs to take care of the seed. He needs to guard the seed. And the seed, when it finds moisture, it starts sprouting and growing. And then what's the next line? He knoweth not how. He knows not how. So this scripture helped me because when I was making the dream of that auditorium, I never asked question, God, from where the amount is going to come? From where this is going to come? Who is going to help me? When is it going to come? What will I do? All those questions, what, where, and all those, that's not my job. In the kingdom of God, you plant the seed, go to sleep. Do everything responsible to guard the seed. Water the seed with thanksgiving. That it is already sprouted and growing because Jesus said, 
whatsoever you desire when you pray believe that you have received it and lord because i have received it i am going to thank you day and night that you have answered the desire of my heart in the kingdom of god it took me 7 years but after 7 years the auditorium was ready with 2000 capacity and 600 people how much money i had when i started 200 australian dollars so can faith supply the raw material the substance for the things you hope for so which is the greatest power in the universe faith and faith is stored in the word of god because that's what he says how will they believe when there is no preacher who has gone and spoken to the people and unless the people hear the teachings of christ how will they have the faith to believe so when jesus went around preaching and teaching he was sharing the secrets of the kingdom and all that he was demanding is repent the kingdom of heaven is close at hand so who are the ones who got connected the ones who repented and what's the meaning of the word repent the meaning of the word repent is to change your thinking as this word is being shared with you this word which is preached to you is asking you after hearing the truth and you are on the facts do you need to change do you need to change the pattern of your thinking are you thinking on what he said she said or what the situation said or any person said or are you thinking on what jesus said but whatever jesus said is not revealed to your senses whatever others said is revealed to your senses so who do you choose so when a person is sitting and listening to the teaching every day day and night even without his knowledge repentance starts taking place that brother he got my cd during the tea time he said i got your cd somewhere in 2017 and the cd has been in the car so every time i start the car the cd plays we have been hearing the teaching on the cd hundreds of times my son is sitting he has been hearing the teaching hundreds of times when the door gets locked nobody has to move everybody is in the car nobody talks i keep hearing my children keep hearing my wife keep hearing and i want to tell you brother hearing the teaching again and again and again i could not even understand when my lifestyle change because when you are hearing the teaching it's challenging you are you willing to change your thinking and align with what god is saying and he said that cd has blessed me so much that there are no other cd that is in that car we have you heard it again we hear it again and again my life has become supernatural now did i pray over him jesus went around preaching and teaching and he even commissioned his disciples go and preach because when you are preaching people will come to the knowledge of truth they will change their thinking they will make their correction and now they will live by faith and not by sight praise god thank you please and that's why he says in romans 10 17 look at the 17th verse what does the preacher do now what happens so then faith comes so when the preacher is preaching So when the preacher is preaching give me the previous slide but they have not but they have not all obeyed the gospel okay for Isaiah said lord who had believed our report mm so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god now watch that i'm going to say something wrong you're going to find out okay look at the screen so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of god 
right or wrong? I said something wrong. Did you catch it? Okay, I'll, I'll say it again. Get that wrong thing. So then, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right thing. So then, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Wrong. Your son has learned everything, man. He knows all the answers. Now, what is so special of that one word, by? Can you see that word, by? If you remove that word, by, it is absolutely wrong. Now, the word of God is called as logos. Means, the whole Bible is the word of God, it's logos. But when God speaks through the written word, and you hear the voice or the revelation, that logos becomes the rhema word. Let me give you an example by which you will understand. A person went to the hospital because he had stomach pain. So he went for a blood test. The person was taking the blood. There were two other patients over there. He took his blood, he took the other patient's blood. And on the blood sample, the tube, he put exchange name. So the report came. Was that report his? No. But it was somebody else's report. Did he know it? No. So on that report it was written, you are suffering from third stage of blood cancer. Now when the person heard it, once, the doctor said you are in the third stage of blood cancer. Will that word affect him? Yes. Now after the discussion is leaving that room, is the doctor walking with him or the doctor's words are walking with him? Is he remembering the doctor's words? Does he want to remember them? But are those words chasing him? Now he picks up the phone and is talking to his family. Is he talking the doctor's words or something else? So now is he hearing the doctor speaking from him, speaking to him with his external ears or is he hearing it from internal ears? Internal ears. Now is this person in a matter of one week be in good health or his health is all gone for a toss? But did he have blood cancer? No. So how come his health became bad? Because he not only believed in it, the words were being spoken not from outside, but from inside. And when he heard those words from inside, fear started to grow. In the same way, when you study the word or the preacher is preaching, you are receiving the word from outside, then you leave this room and you start walking. Question, did you leave the words that you heard inside the church? Or when you are leaving the door, those words are walking with you? When the word that you heard starts speaking to you and starts giving you more and more understanding and revelation, that's when faith is coming and growing in you. Have you heard people say, I got a very weak memory? But how come they can hear or they can remember? 30 years back, the wife will tell her husband, I still remember in 1970, no, in 1993, what your mama did to me. Now, mama is already dead and gone, but are her words still in the wife's heart? Hello, possible? 
are those words giving a faith or irritation does she have a bad memory let me give you some more examples maria do you remember last sunday not this sunday the last sunday what dress you had worn no but do you remember on your wedding day after the wedding uh, gown then you change your dress do you remember the color of the dress how come you can remember that 30 years back 30 or 20 20 years back 25 okay 25 years back brother do you remember the color of your suit <laughs> sorry sorry what did he say what did he say Hallelujah So there are some things we can choose to remember And if you choose to remember the word of God then the word will start speaking to you And the day the word speaks to you you will begin to grow your faith So a person who wants to grow his faith he does not listen to the teaching ones See when I started my journey with Jesus I was in depression and I did not know my name At the age of 33 I was on the journey to death I did not come to church I was brought to church I had nothing to do with church And that's when I prayed to God I don't want to die give me one chance just one chance Please heal me one chance I promise you I will live for you and because I had lost my business my house and everything and on the street depression struck me extremely high and the pressure that was on my mind had an effect on my neck and my neck would be this way throughout the day so when i was taken there the priest uh, had a service for 3 hours in the afternoon the divine mercy prayer the rosary uh, the mass the preaching of the word was for one and a half hour and then at the end was laying of hands so after laying hands he told my wife take him home he is completely healed and my wife was taking me home to our journey and she looked at me and she said you are completely healed my neck was the same i still did not know my name i still could not recognize my wife and my children everything was the same but the words had changed she kept saying to me you are completely healed now was she telling a lie yes no but i was sick so she was talking your future what you are going through now <laughs> who is the teacher he is saying she is speaking the future what you are going through now she is speaking the future now you are completely healed the next morning she teaches my two children to do the same and this priest said bring your husband for all nine days divine mercy navina don't break one day so it was 45 kilometers in bombay imagine and she would take me every day and the next day my children started saying dad you are completely healed fifth day morning i looked at my wife and i say i called her name she said what did you say i called her name the moment she heard me calling her name she was in tears she said hold on she brought both the daughters and said who are these i said these are our daughters what are their names i told their names then she asked me this question who are you what's your name 
and I told my name. Now she asked me, who are you? I said, I'm your husband. From that's where I started my journey. And that's when she said to me, uh, and after that, on that same morning, this neck became absolutely correct. At the age of 33, now I'm 58. I never had a problem with my neck after that. That's when she began to say, I saw you the same. I took you five days for the service. I saw you the same. But the man of God, the priest taught me to say that I'm completely healed and all my senses were saying, I'm telling a lie. But what I was taught on that day, I believed by faith, no physical evidence, only evidence found in the word of God. Okay, let's show the evidence also. 1 Peter 2.24 After we finish this, we'll write some notes, okay? Do you want to write notes? Do you want to write notes? When you have the notes, practice the notes. You can change every scene in your life using unseen and change it in your favor. Yeah, read that. Who his own self Jesus his own self bear our sins in mm. his own body Jesus took our sins and bore our sins in his own body on the tree on the cross on that, uh, yeah, that is on the that cross that we being dead to sins because he took our sin and our sin nature we are dead to sin should live unto righteousness because he has given his nature to us and made us righteous we no longer live in sin we live with the new nature the new creation in righteousness by whose stripes we have you have been healed you were healed so the bible says when he was striked and his body was wounded by those wounds you you were healed or you will be healed? Which one do we believe? So mama, your child is healed or is going to be healed? I'm talking to that mama whom I met during breakfast. Hey mama, is your child going to be healed? Or your ma, according to the word of God, the report says your child is already healed. So do you need to change your thinking? Yes. Do you need to speak the seen or the unseen? All these years, what were you speaking? What did God do to change Abraham? He spoke the unseen. And Abraham learned, put that a uh, Romans 4, 17. Abraham learned to speak the unseen to the seen. Sin is his childless. God has changed his name to Abraham. He changed the name of his wife from Sarai to Sarah, mother of many nations. Now, when Abraham is calling Sarah, what is she hearing? Sarah or mother of many nations? So if somebody is saying, Abraham, what is he saying? He's saying, thus says the Lord. You remember in the Old Testament, the prophets would come and say, thus says the Lord, and prophesy, and those things would come to pass. Now somebody is saying, Abraham, what is he saying? Thank you very much, thus says the Lord. So now when he's saying those words, is he releasing images out of his mouth. Let me give an example. Think of a word I say, dog. Did you think? Hello, I am just giving you a word. Think of a word called dog. Did you think? Yes. Now, how many of you thought D-O-G? None. So the moment I said dog, you, so you thought D-O-G or you thought an image of a dog? 
So what does the word do? Creates images. And that's what he says. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A man sows seed. When he sows a seed, he takes the promise and starts making image. Now put that Ephesians 320 and let's connect them all together. Now unto him. Slowly. Now, again present tense. Now. Not a future tense. So now whenever you speak something, do you need to speak in future tense or past tense? Present tense, past tense. Because all promises of God are always past tense in Christ Jesus. That's why he said, it is finished. Amen? Amen. So now, unto God, that is able to Ah, oh, slowly. Do you believe God is able? Yes. When God gives you a promise, does he have the ability? Does God have the ability to do impossible things possible? Yes. yes. So now unto God, who is able to do, to do exceeding abundantly, exceedingly abundantly, above all that we ask for, above all, some, all, above some, all, all that we ask for things, that God ask. We ask. That God ask. We ask. So is the ball in God's court or in your court? In my. Uh, many a times you say, I surrendered to God. Yes, you surrendered to God, what He promised. But after that, Him, you took it back with worry. All that we ask. Or think. Or we think. think according to the power that worketh in us. According to the power that is working in heaven. The power is working in heaven. Hey, the power is working in heaven. Why are you saying yes? I'm telling wrong. Is he saying the power is working in heaven or in us? Brother, I'm so sorry. Did I say the power is working in heaven? Yes. But is it written in heaven or in us? So why is your wife saying yes to me? She's saying yes to me but saying no to God. Extremely sorry, brother. So sister, is the power working in you or in heaven? All this time, where were you looking? All this time, where were you looking? Really? The power is in you or in heaven? And all these years? So, this power is in you. And if, what if your imagination is wrong? Can that power work for you? Maria, do I have the freedom to go and ask questions? Yes. But none of them will come on. But none of them will come on camera. Okay, so your face will not be recorded. Your face will not be recorded. Oh, because I'm going to ask questions. He came. No, no, no. He is not distracting anybody. In fact, in fact, is encouraging everybody and is saying in the kingdom of God, your age does not matter. Go away. <laughs> did you come on your own or did the mama tell you? Tell me honestly. Did you come on your own or did the mama tell you? Okay. I ask some questions. Supposing in birth there is no rain for a season. Supposing, okay? And there is no water coming in the land. The council has got no water to supply. And we are from the army. 
So our dream has come and told you, you can get water as much as you want, but everyone should come in the queue and take as much as you want. No jumping the queue. Okay? Starting with the ladies. What will you bring from home to take the water? Big one? Okay. What about you? For me, but if I fill my swimming pool with that water, I am able to give it to so many. If your thinking is small, then God cannot make it big. If you look at the scripture, just look at the scripture. What is he saying? Now to God, who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, Far more than you can ask or think or imagine through the power that is at work within you. So this scripture challenged me to ask for an auditorium. And I said, God, according to what you said, 
I am imagining, I am believing, and this is not for me, this is for the kingdom. And that's why I made my imagination so big. And the Lord explained to me, this imagination shall come to pass because of the power working within you. And remember this power is a power called love. Human love. God kind of love. And God kind of love only gives, doesn't take. God kind of love is one-sided. No matter what others do to you, it doesn't matter. Because God's love is one-sided and that's what Jesus showed. That even though he was tortured and everything, he continued to love and forgive. And I said, why do you say about love? Why not faith? And he showed me a scripture. Go to Galatians chapter 5 verse 6. For in Christ, are we all in Christ? Yes. For in Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but, but, faith, but, faith, faith, which worketh by love. So faith works where there is love. When love is distorted, Faith cannot work. In your house, there's a big curtain in that room where I am. Brother Augustine, and I saw the curtain is long and good in height and good thickness, it is very heavy. Not a thin one that it will fly. Now, what if that rod is weak? It won't break, it will fall. That's why, brother, there's a big difference between our wardrobe and a woman's wardrobe. In the men's wardrobe, on every hanger, the man will put at least seven to eight shirts with two or three jeans on one hanger. And in our wardrobe with all those hangers, the rod is bending with load. But when you open a lady's wardrobe, they are very systematic. One anger, one dress. So he is talking about what he sees at home. <laughs> Mama's wardrobe is as good as empty. Empty? Yeah. Yeah. Mama lives by the word of God. Why are you putting pressure on my client? <laughs> Just because he's small in height doesn't mean you can put pressure on him. So now, the rod falls down. Where are all the hangers? On the floor. So the love rod has to be very strong because faith works through Love, healing works through love, deliverance works through love. So what's the currency of heaven? Love. How much time does it take to short circuit love? If you got that love rod strong, now God says, ask what you want. Because when your love rod is strong, what he said, my mom's wardrobe is as good as empty. He's saying, my mom has got love for the kingdom and she has got no love for the world. When there is love for the world, this color yellow, this color yellow, the shoes are yellow, the socks are yellow, the clips are yellow, the bag is yellow, I'm yellow, yellow, and the car also is yellow. You look at his wardrobe, always bending. Look at her wardrobe, all are straight. Praise God. I'm just giving a parable because when pressure is put on your love rod and it falls, it's unstable, it's weak, faith cannot work, 
healing cannot work deliverance cannot work because they all rest on one rod on one hanger as to be put on a rod and that rod is the love rod now when the love rod is strong hanger faith is strong now you ask what you want god says he is able to do exceedingly abundantly far more than you can think ask think imagine to the power of love that is within you so when there is power of love are you thinking about yourself or are you thinking about the kingdom out of the 24 hours how much time do you spend time in thinking about yourself brother i don't think about myself okay about your spouse about your children then you have to go for confession so tell me inside of us is the power there love power which god has given to us as a gift are we using that love love power for selfish desire or kingdom desire i don't know in, in i studied in bombay anybody studied in bombay are bombay wala hai yaar in bombay when we went to school there was a question what is your basic necessity and we were taught roti kapda aur makan that is food clothing and shelter and that's what the parents thought the children lesson child you got to go to school study well get good percentage then you have to go to work get the salary then use the salary to make a house clothe yourself hmm and don't forget the food that's what you have to do in life and we all believe right now the one who believes in christ matthew 6 33 let's go to 31 because that word but is there no okay. so let's see what jesus to say okay therefore god so clothed the grass of the field which today is therefore i say to you take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink no yet for your body what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment be all the fowls of the air for they sow not neither do they reap nor gather into bands yet your heavenly father feeds them are you much better are you not much better than they which of you taking thought can add one cubic unto his stature and why take you thought for raiment consider the lilies of the field how they grow and they toil not neither do they spin and yet i say unto you that even solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these therefore if god so clothe the grass of the field which is today and tomorrow is cast into the oven shall he not much more clothe you o you of little faith therefore can you raise the 31 therefore take no thought saying what shall we eat what shall we drink what shall we be clothed look at the 31 take no thought saying what shall we eat what shall we drink what shall we drink where which shall we be clothed for after all these things do the gentiles seek for your heavenly father knows that you have need of all these things is there anybody here who thinks about what should i eat what should i drink what should i wear especially when we come on a sunday morning for mass does anybody ever come thinking what shall i cook today what shall i wear today that's what jesus saying take no thought saying what shall we eat what shall we drink what shall we be where shall we where with shall we be clothed 
Muscle, have you ever been thinking, what shall I wear, what shall I drink, what shall I eat? And if you're thinking, you're a Gentile. According to Jesus, hello, according to Jesus. Now tell me, on a Sunday morning, how many people do you think come with this? Do you think of mommy gives you the dress you wear, Baba? Whatever the mom gives you, so you're not thinking. Can you see the difference? And what about Dara? Mommy gives him also the dress. He takes by himself, but you never. You wait for mommy or Dara to give you the dress. Praise God. You don't tell mama I want this one. Don't turn him, he's good. He's not a gentile, he's proving to all of us. So tell me on a Sunday morning, how many people come with this mindset? What should I wear? And for Christmas mass, Maria, do you think? Christmas here, summer, people go in church. Oh, I don't know, but I'm just asking because Jesus said, yes. for after all but these things, do the gentiles seek? For your heavenly father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek you first. The kingdom of God. But seek you first. The kingdom of God. But seek you first. The God. And then. And then. All these things shall be added unto you. So when we were small, we were taught, run after roti, kapada, or makan. Jesus saying, run after my kingdom and my teaching and my righteousness. Roti, kapda, or makan will run after you. Praise God. Which one do we practice? 26 years I've seen this working. And I tell people, you know, our ministry is a ministry which has got purchase department, but no sales department. Purchase department, we have a lot of expenses. Sales department, there's no box called donation. How does the system work? Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added unto you. Seek you first the unseen and when you are running after the unseen day and night don't worry about the seen. The father knows everything. He will supply all your need. That's why we use that scripture. I know that my God supplies Put that Philippines 419. So there are now two facts, two kinds of truth. One is when I went to school, I learned run after Proti Kapra Makan. And now when I'm running the Bible, it's saying run after the teachings of Christ and Roti Kapra Makan will run after you. Now somebody will say, is this practical in today's world? Yes. Give me an example. In India, there used to be a lady named Mother Teresa. Have you heard her? Yes. She came from foreign mm. and she brought a lot of money to India. Praise God. None. She was a nun. Yeah, but she didn't bring anything. She did not bring anything. She was in the convent. One day she happened to go out and she saw the leopards. Le lepers, she saw the untouchables, she saw people on the street dying, she even saw children being thrown into the gutter. Yeah. Now when she saw that, she was no longer comfortable in the convent. So she went and spoke to them that I need to do something about this problem, so nobody supported her. She went to the bishop, she did not get support. So she said, I cannot stay in this comfort zone, I have to do something. So as she was a foreigner, she called up a mom, dad and the community in her country and said, can you send some money? And they sent thousands and thousands of dollars and she built up the house for the poor. Now, what she was seeking was first the kingdom of God or first her comfort? Kingdom of God. Did she have the money? No. Did she have the place? Did she have anything? She had faith. She had the teaching. And above all, she had love. Did she love her body 
or did she love others? So she had the God kind of love, and using the God kind of love, she had some children, and that day there was no money for breakfast. So she thought, let me go on the street and talk to the people, and she went to a shop and asked for alms. The man loved her so much that he gave her spit on her palm. The man did not know that she has come from abroad, champion in martial arts. She closed it, and before he could say anything, she gave one punch and put a hand out. There were three teeth that came out. The fellow got so scared. He said, "Take what you want, but please spare me." No. So this is not the right story I shared. No. Okay. Okay. Your story says she took the spit and she said, "This is what you gave to me. Yes. Now can you give something for my children?" Yes. Did the man give her another handful of spit? No. He was ashamed. She left the shop and she went ahead. By the time she returned to a place, this man was there with what? Breakfast for that day or for every day. Now, how did she get the supply? By seeking Jesus, his teaching, his righteousness. She passed the test of insult, overcoming by using love. Did the father supply all her needs? So is the power of love working in us? When the power of love is working in us, are we interested in ourselves or using ourselves for comforting others? Then you shall lack nothing. Whatever you have in your hand, you can use it for yourself. It becomes a harvest. But when you use it for others' benefit, it becomes a seed. And when it becomes a seed that you are using for others, remember, the seed will not leave your life. It is only going into the future, multiplying, and come back to you in the right season, bringing in the harvest that you need. So every day the question is: I've got so many things with me. Do I use it for myself, or do I use it in the kingdom? If you use it in the kingdom, it is a seed. If you if you use it for yourself, it is a harvest. Time is a seed. Everybody is given twenty four hours. Where do you use your time? In the kingdom, or for your kingdom? That's going to be your harvest. So tell me, is the Bible practical truth? If you practice it God's way, it is so practical. and it is so supernatural that you work hard in the kingdom it shall produce the fruit beyond your imagination so can we write down some things that we learned today please it is god and abraham it is god and abraham in romans 4 16 and 17 It is God and Abraham in Romans four sixteen and seventeen who are calling things who are calling things that are not physically manifested that are not. physically manifested they are calling from the unseen to come into the seen as though they have come example god said i have made you 
the father of many nations. I have made you the father of many nations. Abraham did not have a child at that time. But the Bible says he believed God. And it was accounted he believed God and it was accounted unto him and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. That is Romans 4 22. This is the way that we begin to change. This is the way that we begin to change the scene. and shape the unseen. Abraham called Abraham called things which were not manifested things which were not manifested in the natural realm as though they were in the natural realm. He kept believing and calling he kept believing and calling until <coughs> they were manifested. <clears throat> looking to the scene, looking to the scene, which was hopeless, Abraham believed Hoping against hope. Hoping against hope. That he might be. That he might become. The father of many nations. Might become the father of many nations according to what was spoken according to what was spoken verse 18 in the natural he was 99 and his wife was 89 but he was not weak in faith was 19 the next line please write it in capital letters Abraham would not consider Abraham would not consider anything anything that contradicted anything that God that contradicted what God has spoken. God did something powerful. God did something powerful to help Abraham and Sarah.
to help Abraham and Sarah in believing in believing what he had said god said neither shall your name neither shall your name neither shall your name any more be called abram a b r a m abram but abraham shall your name be for a father of many nations for a father of many nations have high made thee for the father of many nations have i made thee made thee made you made you and god said unto abraham as for sarai your wife as for sarai s a r a i your wife you shall not call her you shall not call her by that name sarai but sarah shall be her name but sarah shall be a name that is mother of many nations that is genesis chapter 15 genesis chapter 17 was number 5 and 15 genesis 17 was number 5 and 15 please put that in capital letters god had promised abraham something that was absolutely impossible god had promised abraham something that was absolutely impossible in the natural because abram was too old sarah was too old and god does not violate and god does not violate v i o l a t e violate his laws therefore god changed their names every time sarah heard the name sarah every time sarah heard the name sarah she heard i am the mother of many nations so also abraham heard himself being called father of many nations bible faith bible faith comes bible faith comes by hearing and hearing 
by the word of God. So God changed the scene. So God changed the scene. and shaped the unseen continue the next line and underline the line very 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 important god changed the scene and shaped the unseen for abraham and sarah by using by using their own voices by using their own voices that means when they heard their names being called they did not hear sarah or abraham but they heard father of many nations and mother of many nations when they called themselves when they called themselves by their name they said i am the father of many nations I am the mother of many nations they were changing the same things they were changing the same things and shaping the unseen with their own voices i believe the mama is getting the formula for a child god's way of changing the scene god's way of changing the scene and establishing the unseen and establishing the unseen is with words wow is with words words produce images words produce images words produce images in my spirit first words produce images in my spirit first in my spirit first and then in my mind the bible says Sarah received strength bracket faith to conceive seed to conceive seed she 
she did it by hearing and hearing by god's word so when they heard their names being called so when they heard their names being called they quickly said thus says the lord god spoke it in past tense god spoke it in past tense and abram believed god that god was speaking to the seed but was shaping the unseen and now calling the unseen things from the invisible realm from the invisible realm rem r e a l m to the visible rem and this is the way i can change the scene and bring the unseen into manifestation so my friend can i change everything in life i land up with a testimony when i lost everything and there was no money to eat food in bombay i would take a packet of glucose biscuit which was at that time 2 rupees 50 paisa and i would take a glass of water dip the biscuit in and that was my breakfast and i was working in a company manufacturing diamond tools and i was getting a salary and i wanted to know how does the system work give and it shall be given so there are times when i would put 25000 30000 into the box and for breakfast i would still be eating omelet pav vada pav or the biscuit because i wanted to know if the system is true i want to see it multiply and i work for 8 months 7 to 8 months the same god help me this time to start the same business but on rental premises and within 11 years blessed me and blessed me and blessed me and multiplied it so much that i had a flat and two own factories and everything was going fine till a day came when i was supposed to go to gujarat for preaching and there was heavy rain and at that same time i was now making hydraulic jacks with a jockey for the caravans for uk and all my goods were ready and i have to export and i have to go to gujarat having kept everything ready there was heavy rain and in that rain all my goods were under water now i had option do i go to preaching 
or do I pay the penalty of not exporting the things on time? So I decided not to go and I started reconditioning everything and one of my close friend called me that night to ask me how is the retreat going on in Gujarat? And I said, I'm not, I'm not there. He said, why? I said, don't you know in Bombay there is such a heavy rain? <laughs> he laughed and he said, you selfish person, for you money is bigger than what God has called you. I'm so sure you are in the factory. And he began to insult me on the phone and started even telling me, God should have left you where you were 11 years back. He brought you out, he blessed you, and now when you had to make a choice, you made a choice for money. I cut the line, but the words did not leave me. That night I could not sleep. God took me on a movie at a high speed, showing me from where I was to where I am now. And he asked me a question. To the extent where I brought you out, are you trusting in your resources? Are you trusting in me? I said, I am trusting in you. So you make a choice. Do you want to go after business or do you want to go after me? I said, Lord, I want to go after you. So what do you do with your business? Very simple. Tomorrow morning I'll go and put the shutters down. I'll give up my job, business. Early morning I went and I shut down the factory. My, fa my workers could not believe it. They said, the boss has gone mad. Everybody said, you've gone mad. And I said, I used to be mad. And I've come to my senses. Because there's such a demand on one side, I have to preach. A lot of openings. On the other side, the business is there, a lot of money. The reason I wanted to do business is so that I, get, can, I can earn my money. Because I looked at Paul. Paul was a man who, during the day, would be manufacturing tents. During the evening and night, he would be preaching. So I did not want to go and look at anybody's pocket. I've got gift, I've got talent, I've got hard labor, I've got everything, I can work. And this was my argument with God. And he said, listen, if I use your resources, to build up the auditorium or anything, there will always be a point, I worked hard and I did this. And I want to prove to you that I'm not going to take anything from you and still create the auditorium by bringing the resources from outside. So that when it is completed, you can never ever boast I did it. And so I shut down my business and I started with this. Now it's been 15 years. If you ask me, what was the best choice of your life, best decision? The day I met Jesus and the day I closed down my business to follow him. Now I'm working full time, but I tell you, every day I work for nothing less than 20 hours without salary because he has already given me what I need. He cancelled hell for me and gave heaven for me as a gift. And therefore, I do not take a single day holiday because I understand my holiday is somebody's misery. Yesterday there were calls at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock in the morning. And there are times when a person calls up and he has made a decision to commit suicide. If I pick up that call and talk to that person for might be 
30 minutes or 40 minutes, I have changed that person's decision. But if I go to sleep, the call had come, but I missed it. Because I understand what God has given me is a gift. If I use it, it changes so many people's life. Today during the breakfast time, this lady spoke to me. I've got this issue. And I said, listen, I changed the topic for you. The report says, there's no chance for your son. But that's not what God says. If she listens to this topic again and again and again, and just practices this topic, I will hear from her. Hey brother, I was able to kill that sickness from the root. Because the unseen is the truth. The unseen is what created the whole universe. And if she realizes, there are no medicines for some of the sicknesses and disease. But the unseen is the medicine for everything. And if I can use that unseen, I can change the future of that child. I remember I was in uh, Dubai and a small boy, smaller than him, much smaller than him. His name is Justin. And this boy came to me with his whole body full of skin being peeled off. What do you call that? No, 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 no not the dry skin. The skin is wet. But eczema? Yeah, everything is good. And looking at his condition, the mama was crying and I said, Mama, I'll be coming next month. But next month I'll be seeing Justin with a new skin. If you're ready to do it for, if you follow the instruction. And I said, the Bible speaks in the book of Revelation that we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. If you treat that sickness as a demonic force, you will win. And she looked at me and I said, let me show you. Can you put that? Acts 10, 38. How many, of, how many people treat sickness as a demonic force? Look at what Jesus says. Read. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with, with the Holy Spirit and with power. Who went about doing good. Who went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God, God was with him. And I told his mother, if you take this sickness as a demonic spirit and fight it, you'll be able to terminate it. Because the Bible says, put that revelation, chapter 12, verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our God, day and night. And they overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They loved not their lives, even unto the death. They overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. I said to this mama, listen, the word of God says we overcome Satan by the blood of Jesus. When you go home, teach Justin that Justin, I'm going to give you a bath. I know that bath, that water is extremely poisonous. It will burn you, it will cause you more pain. But this will not be water, this will be the blood of Jesus. You put your hand in that bucket of water and say, Jesus, you said, all those who believe in me, the very things that I did, you shall do also. 
so Lord Jesus you turn water into wine and wine into your blood I believe that when I put my hand in that water you have turned it into the blood of Jesus and the word says we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb so when you're going to pour that water on his body tell Justin this is not water this is the blood of Jesus and let that blood be on his skin for some time so that that blood will enter his skin and enter his muscles and enter his bones and his marrow it will be painful for him but do it and the mother took Justin home very small boy and he heard the mother and me speaking and he was ready he said mom I'm ready and to a surprise Justin would say mom I want this blood bath three times a day there was pain in having bath but much more pain was when the mother would wipe his body with the towel but the moment she would touch the body and even rub the skin would peel off so Justin was now actually bleeding and that small boy said mom blood of Jesus can heal me I'm ready to take bath three times a day next month when I came Justin came to me and said brother see there's no trace of any wound on my skin in one month everything was gone he fought he believed and fought and thank God for the mother who believed with him there are many seen things in our life and we have received so much of knowledge of the seen that we believe the seen as if the scientists are the one who created us they never created us God is the one who created and he is the one who is giving us the knowledge from the Bible. Am I going to fight the same battle? Believing the seen or believing the unseen? And we see that God used Abraham's voice, Sarah's voice, helping them to speak the unseen to the seen. And as they were speaking, they were imagining, it was shaping, and it came to pass. I met this lovely couple, the last time in 2018, 2018, they were going through some situation, and I said, can we pray, and I want you to only repeat this unseen, don't look at what you see. Don't open your mouth and say what you see. Just believe in the unseen and keep on repeating. I think was it yesterday, last night? Last night they both, they come for all the meetings. I don't know from how far they are coming, but they come for all the meetings. Last night they both caught me and they said we want to tell you something. God. The last time what you told us, in the natural there was no evidence that it would come to pass. But we did what you told us. And we want to tell you, every one of those things which were unseen were manifested. Every meeting I'll see them. They will never come and say, brother, please, can you pray? Never. But everything that I'm speaking, they will be writing, they'll be going home, they'll be practicing, and they will practice. And now they are saying, all that you said, has come to pass now what I told them was the promise of God unseen but the best part is they gave voice to that unseen and when they gave that voice to the unseen things were changed in Goa I used to run a rehab for the alcoholics and drug addicts can I ask you a question can one drug addict in a house cause a lot of trouble one 
what about 70 of them under one roof can there be peace or pieces I'm asking peace or pieces and 70 of them were staying together learning the word of God and not one of them having issues not one of them having withdrawals and every one of them coming out by the power of God the day the Lord touched me on that day the club life went the gang fight went alcohol went smoking went everything that was an addiction everything went and I want to tell you I never changed but the word that I heard the unseen change the scene in me and set me free Father, we thank you for teaching us this powerful truth. And I pray, Lord, that all of us learn the system of the kingdom of God and especially use our voice to speak your promises which are unseen. And as we speak your promises in Christ, you are the one who changes the unseen into seen and which is seen is completely uprooted and cast into the sea. Thank you for teaching us this powerful truth, so Father. And I believe what we have studied, we are living by faith and not by sight, giving voice to our faith and destroying the works of the devil. We thank you for teaching us this powerful truth in the glorious and mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen.